momentum. So when you hear the word momentum, you probably think of things that are moving fast or hard to stop in some way, right? And that's actually a good, relatively good definition of momentum. Uh, momentum is a measurement of how difficult it is to stop an object from moving, essentially. Um, and you think about things that have a lot of momentum. You think about, you know, a car, right? A car that's speeding down the highway. So speed certainly has something to do with it, right? However, can we think about comparing two objects that are, well, relatively similar? So you can take both of these, and if I drop this marker from here, you probably wouldn't say it has very much momentum, right? If you drop it into my hand, I don't even have to push on the marker to get it to stop, right? However, this book, it's a little exaggerated, the book is more difficult to stop. Why is that? They both accelerate at the same rate, they both started at zero, so they should have the same speed when they hit the spot. Well, the book has a lot more mass than the marker does, right? So momentum must have something to do with mass. Um, we talked about speed. Let's go to the, the other screen. Let's take an object that is almost very, very small amount of mass, like a bullet, but a very high speed. And when the bullet hits me, I don't know why it would, hopefully no one's shooting at me, but if the bullet hits me, uh, my body is going to stop the bullet, but not before the bullet goes through part of my body. So that bullet also has a lot of momentum because it's hard for my body to stop that bullet. Sometimes it might just go clean through. Uh, so a very high speed or velocity or a very high mass can both lead to a large momentum. So momentum must be directly proportional to both of these factors. Uh, and indeed, it is. Because momentum starts with m, m is already taken uh, by mass, so we call momentum p. Um, some people think this is because uh, momentum used to be called impetus, uh, and the Latin root for impetus starts with the p, so we use p. And p, is being directly proportional to both m and v, is actually just equal to mass times speed or velocity. We're not sure which one. Is momentum a vector? Should we be using the vector form? Should we be using a velocity, or should we be using the scalar of speed? Well, let's think about this. Um, when we talk about momentum, we're talking generally if a bullet comes at me, I'm not that afraid if I, you know, see it go right by my nose. Well, I probably would be afraid, but for no reason because it's not going to hit me, right? It has a velocity in that direction. If I was to rub my nose that went by, and I was to poke it with my nose, and there was not much friction, it wouldn't really do anything, right? It's only if it gets hit this side that it actually hurts. If I'm in a car chase, two cars are going up the street, they're both going really fast, and one bumps one a little bit, chances are that car is going to spin out of control. Because you apply a force, and it's easy to change that car's motion or direction. However, if there's a barrier and the car runs into the barrier, it usually flips over the barrier and keeps going. It's hard to change the car's um, speed or direction in that manner. So this is different than that, right? That's because momentum, the, the velocity of the car is in that direction. It's not moving at all, right or left. It's not going to resist that. So momentum is indeed a vector, uh, and it points in the same direction as velocity. So we have to put our little vector hats on here and here. Um, we also talked about that momentum has something to do with force, right? Something to do with forces. So let's see if we can tease out that connection. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. You notice that we know momentum and force are somehow related. They're both um, proportional to mass. And velocity and acceleration we know are also related. So let's write acceleration in terms of velocity. We know that force is equal to mass times acceleration, which is the change in velocity over the change in time. So we're going to have change in velocity over change in time. And m times the change in velocity, well, that's just going to be the change in momentum, right? However much the velocity changes, it will change the momentum that much, assuming that mass is constant, which for our purposes it is. If you're doing rocket problems where it's ejecting fuel, the mass will be changing and it doesn't quite work. But we're going to kind of hand wave that. So uh, force, then, is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. And this is the relationship between momentum and force. So these two 
are the key takeaways. These are the two equations that are going to be the most useful to you. Um, they're both pretty useful. Uh, this is really Newton's second law. This is what Newton's second law actually says. Um, it's more general than F equals MA. Uh, and it applies in more situations. Um, the other thing that you should be able to know how to do, well, let's talk about this for a little bit first. So what this says is that a force applied over time produces a change in momentum, right? Force, if you multiply both sides by delta T, force times time, see it produces a change in momentum. And that's true. If we push something, it's going to speed up, slow down, or change direction. So its momentum is going to change, right? Change in velocity produces a change in momentum. Good. Um, the other thing we should know how to do is calculate the total momentum of a closed system. What I mean by that is let's say we have multiple objects. We have a pool table, for example. We have a whole bunch of balls just rolling around in the pool table. Um, we have to know how to add those together. So if I have a ball here, I'm going to say this has momentum 1. And I have another ball, which has momentum 2. I want to know what's the total momentum. Well, the total momentum for any system is going to be the sum of all of the momentum, all the, all the objects, the momentum of all of the objects in the system. Say that again. The momentum of a system, total momentum of a system, is equal to the sum of the momentum of each object in the system. So we can write that as the total momentum of a system is equal to, we'll say, P1 plus P2 plus so on and so forth. You can write this more concisely as if you have a system with n objects, uh, the total momentum of a system uh, is equal to the sum uh, from, we'll say, the first object to the nth object uh, of the momentum of each of the objects, which is equivalent to this, and assuming that this ends at pn. All right? So we can apply that to this situation, and we can say, OK, well, let's add that up. The total momentum is going to be, we're going to have momentum is equal to p1 is the magnitude of the first, plus p2. And um, this tells us, that it's a positive sign, right? Plus, plus. Um, this tells us that it's going to be moving to the right. Because remember that the sign is the relevant thing that tells you about the direction of the vector. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that you have, when you have negative momentum, it doesn't mean you somehow have negative mass or something like that. It just means you're going in the other direction. Um, we can see that better if we do something like this, where we have p1 to the right. We have another object which has p2 to the left. The momentum of this system is going to be p1 minus p2. Right? And again, these are the magnitudes of the total momentum. Because really, right, this would be, uh, if we wrote this in vector form, we'd have just p uh, total is equal to p1 plus p2. And here, we also have p is equal to p1 plus p2. However, we look at this vector, right, the vector p2 for this case. I'll draw a line and separate these. So in this case, the vector p2 is equal to uh, negative p2 in the, in the x direction. And this is under the assumption that right is positive and left is negative. Okay? So that's why we write that. So anytime you're analyzing the momentum of a system, make sure you're careful with signs. Make sure you choose a direction to be positive or negative and you're consistent throughout the problem, just like you were doing when we did forces. Um, so next we're going to learn how to apply uh, momentum to different situations, uh, mainly collisions uh, and explosions.